tensor of layers when you see on the hologram. And in our case, this I write the layers. The next step is to separate each lines on your stencil on huge amount of points, as it's see on, on, on the slide. As for the material of the plate, we need a rather rigid material, but it also has to be smoothed enough for the needle of compressors, and our personal choice is a piece of plexiglass. The, the next step is scratching. Using a compressor with constant radius, you have to scratch circular arcs uh, with the geometrical center in each point, respectively. And thus, moving straight on and following this instruction, we got no hologram but intercrossing circular arcs, and it's very difficult to notice IYPT letters here. Of course, the most important component is the light from point source of light, and thus, in the reflected light, we get this image. But if we will reverse the plate, light will go through the plate, and we could observe a bit wider image. Nevertheless, the most fascinating thing in observation of the holographic image in motion, for instance, here you can see that when we are moving the plate, with respect to the plate, position of point source of light is changing. Therefore, obviously, as it's shown in the video, position of brilliant points is changing too. Now, let us reverse the plate and observe behavior of sparkling points in this case. We see that up to a certain limit, image expands. After that, we see the reflection of the sun, and after the reflection of the sun, we see the contraction of the image. And thus, after the observation of the holographic <coughs> image on the plate, of the, after the observation of the phenomenon, we set the following plan for our work. First, let's convince that we really can call this image hologram. After that, we will try to thoroughly investigate the interaction between the fine smooth, singular circular scratch and the points through the flag. But the word hologram also implies a period of three-dimensional effect on the surface. And today, we will try to uh, discuss the basic causes of a on a three-dimensional effect on the surface and how to achieve it. So let's get the first step of our plan and you know we can call this image hologram with all confidence. Uh, and in order to prove that, we compare it to principally different kinds of holograms. And of course, both kinds give to us a three-dimensional effect as a result. But uh, there's also one difference. In other words, any part of coherent hologram contains an information about the entire image. And Unfortunately, scratch hologram has no this effect. Also, besides the differences, our scratch hologram has its own specialities. And the first one specialities is that we get no diffraction or interference phenomenon in this case because the size of the path is much greater than the wavelength of visible light. The second one speciality is that the image appears due to the diffusive scattering of light on the surface. Uh, because of diffuse scattering, incoming beams yeah. will refract in different directions instead of only one direction of mirror reflection. And this is crucial point of such making of hologram. Therefore, let's take a detailed look at this principle. After the making of hologram, we make a photo using a microscope of scratch, and we can conclude that they are rather s straight and smooth. And in case that if a fine circular scratch is illuminated from point source of light, we will get the following situation. Light is striking the scratch and spreads this way that's shown in the photo. As a result, we get a circle with two most notable points, and each of points corresponds to the refracted and reflected beam respectively. Therefore, we can make a conclusion from this photo that diffusive scattering of light on the surface can be as refractive as reflected. And in general case, if a fine smooth circular scratch is illuminated from point source of light, spreading of the rays shown on the slide. And it's very important that Bright scattered light can be found on the surface of a cone, as it's shown in the picture. But despite the previous photo with the laser, unfortunately we can observe holographic image in the laser beam. We need a beam of parallel rays, and we solve the problem this way. We use the sunlight instead of hundreds of laser pointers. And nevertheless, the sun is appropriate point source of light, because the circular scratch are close to the direct ray, and all of this makes us sure that light rays falling from the sun onto the plate, almost parallel. And in case of singular circular scratch and parallel rays from the sun, we will get the two sparkling points, geometrical center of singular circle, and the sun will lie on one line. All of this helped us to guess Fermat's principle. And Fermat's principle implies that a couple of brilliant points in our case will lie on the longest and the shortest trajectories of the sun light respectively. Uh, but in case of real scratch hologram, when the plate is plenty of different circular squares on each of them, there will be a couple of brilliant points. And this is the crucial point of appearing of holographic image on the surface. Here is now basic considerations we simulated in GeoGebra program behavior of sparkling points in this case. And you really can observe fascinating motion of sparkling points uh, according 
with respect to the geometrical center of circular arcs, as it's shown on the video. Okay, but on the previous video, you could observe only the motion of sparkling points. But maybe also someone could notice the previous video appearing of floating of the result image above or underneath the surface. And this very quality in fact is three-dimensional appearance of the stencil of layers we're gonna see on the code row. Uh, in order to explain it, let us assume the most simple situation with fine smooth single circle scratch, and it's also argued the point source of light lies on the geometrical um, <coughs> perpendicular growing from the geometrical center of the circle. We marked each incident rise for each human's eye, respectively with different colors. And according to the Fermat's principle, because our eyes are placed on different positions, there will be two different rays. And after that, because of binocular effect, our personal brain guesses that real sparkling point lies slightly above the surface, uh, slightly underneath the surface, I'm sorry. And using our basic considerations, we can assume even opposite situation. And our brain guesses that real sparkling point lies above the surface. And after the qualitative explanation of this interesting effect, uh, let us explain and uh, calculate the resulting depth of the image. Here is a geometrical considerations of similar triangles, as you can see on the slide. We can easily calculate the resulting depth of the image against this equation. But in opposite situation, when the real sparkling point is above the surface, we can get almost the same equation. And as far as we got the equation for calculating of the resulting depth of the image, we should verify it theoretically. And let's calculate, if you, for instance, take a certain point, and if you will know the radius of circular stretch, you use a compatible <coughs> constant radius, it's easy to know the radius of circular stretch. Uh, using our previous formulas we get, uh, we can easily calculate the, the theoretically the resulting depth of the image. And as you can see, it was equal about 17.6 uh, centimeters. And as far as we got that theoretical, uh, the theoretical result, the resulting the depth of the image, we should verify it experimentally. And to do that, uh, we used such uh, experimental assemblage. Uh, how does it work? Uh, we placed the stencil of the letters I worked you would like to see on the hologram on previously theoretically calculated distance be behind the player of scratch and maybe the resulting photo. And as you can see, we see a rather good, especially as important parts of the stencil agreement between the predicted shape of stencil of letters IYPD and our experimental holographic image. That is why all of this makes us sure that our personal explanation of floating effect was really proper and appropriate for this situation. Thus, to sum up our whole previous observations, for different position of the observer, there will be appropriate depth of the image. And because of the depth of the image is not constant, all of this makes this very floating effect. But besides the floatings, there is one fascinating effect in case of solid bodies. For instance, uh, unfortunately we have seen that holographic image of letters have no three-dimensional effect, have no volume effect. And in order to achieve volume effect, you have to scratch many concentric circles with different radii. And in order to do that, uh, we really scratch different concentric circles with different radii. Uh, so we use <coughs> square as a plate of scratch. Uh, it can be concerned in holographic image, uh, in case of volume, uh, holographic image of the group slightly later. Uh, so we scratched many different concentric circles with different radii at the vertices of the square and many circles with the same radii at the edge of the square. But before we place the plate of scratch under the sun, let us assume uh, the most interesting computer simulation. We really can get volume effect, volume three-dimensional holographic image of the group accordingly to the position of points source of light. It's shown uh, using a GeoGebra computer program. And after the observation of this volume effect in our computer simulation, we placed this very red plate before the sun and observe really interesting, in my opinion, and fascinating motion of volume group. You really see that when we are moving the plate and when we even are rotating the plate, nothing changed and as a result we get an amazing three-dimensional volume effect of the cube. Here you can see how it works and also uh, I hope you remember in step-to-step -step algorithm I also mentioned circular arcs but not the whole circles. 
wherever you can scratch the whole circles and in this situation as we see later in computer program ah you could see slightly later before my after <coughs> my recording sorry there's some problem with technique but on this video shown that in case of the whole circles spark, sparkling point will be moving around the whole circles and as a result holographic image appears so let me summarize our research and in our personal exploration we at least we try to investigate interaction between the fine smooth circular single scratch and the point source of fiber. Namely, we explain how the scratch hologram works, but at every circular scratch there's a pair of sparkling points and where these points are situated. We offered various ways to scratch a hologram we calculated the depth of orthoscopic and periscopic image and compared this result with experimental data. You could see a rather good agreement <coughs> of the image in our personal holographic image of the letters I left it in. We made some computer simulations of the phenomenon and produced the three-dimensional image of the two. And also I'd like to say that this is a list of our references of all of this may be great letters to tell about this fascinating problem. And thank you for listening to me during last 12 minutes. Okay, question from the reporter. First, I would like to ask about the geometry of the strand. So, from your side, I think you assume that it's uh, circular. Yes. Have you uh, have any pictures or any evidence that it is a circular? We just use a compasses with concentrators, so obviously it was circular. Now obviously, did you obviously use a microscope to, to view it? Oh. Did you use a microscope? I think I think that it's not necessary to verify if you just. Okay, we'll come to that in the discussion later. Can you see it on the plate? Uh, could, you, could you please listen to me, please? Okay. And uh, I would like to ask you something about the circle of the arch. Could I use the board right here? Yes. Okay. okay. So as the circle is like this, and we're viewing this way, the light comes from this way, right? Uh, how about we are circles? You said that there's a point right here and point right here. Am I correct? Yes. Do these points, are these points identical? Uh, what do you mean by that? Do yes. they look identical by size? Uh, I suppose that yes. I think not because when it comes right here... Maybe it's not a uh, question for the, for the first time of, uh, before our discussion. Maybe uh, this question is for my time, so I'll, I'll There just is clarifying questions allowed. I think that is a clarifying question. Okay. okay. And another thing about the camera and the eye, you said it, it looks 3D because we have our eyes. Oh, yeah, yes. Have been, but when you record your experiment, you use a camera which has only one yes. sensor, right? And this is a very good question, so but I suppose that we should bring it to the subsequent discussion. Okay, we'll bring it to the discussion. So how many minutes of that? Okay, one minute. You said that the light has to be a parallel light source, right? Yes. So you use the sun. Well, have you any tried with a... Uh, uh, a flashlight? Flashlight? Uh, maybe of course at long distances between the but flashlight and the plate of scratch we tried to obtain holographic so images with the flashlight it? and we really obtained it yes, at long distances between the flashlight and the plate of scratch. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And there's uh, three minutes time for preparation of your home. <laughs>